So you've had this altercation in the hotel room. The fix hasn't worked, but this continued on. I mean, you were still yeah. fixing matches. It happened in the county scene in 2010. Yeah. Champions League with the Auckland Aces in 2012. So this mm. is a four-year period, Lou. Why didn't you get out? Why couldn't you get out? Well, when it started off in England for the first time, you know, I'd, after that ICL tournament where it was just gone, it was broken. I met my family in the UK, started off life, got got a call up for Lancashire, which was just a dream come true. What a what a what an association that is to to play for. The history behind that club and starting my career, I turned my back on New Zealand. You know, I was working towards a British citizenship, so I could sort of play in the UK as a local. Uh, and here I am with this opportunity, start the tournaments, did okay. Uh, the 2020 started kicking off and that's when the phone call came and that was my hero. Same person. Same person saying, time to meet. And I was excited because I thought, right, you know, what's this going to be about? Be about? And maybe he H Had you me. communicated in between the ICL in 2008 and these matches in 2010? Did you guys... Oh, this did, is 2008. 2008 jump, still? Jump, yeah, this is still 2008. Right. Yep. So you're jumping the gun there. I know there's a lot that's happened. There is a lot. Yeah. So uh, you guys, you, you rebuilt the relationship, as you say, after the altercation in the hotel room. And well, that you... was the whole idea of the meeting. So I met, I met my hero at a petrol station on the M1. He was over there playing at the same time and pretty much sat me down and said, listen, I believe it, believe you. It was a mistake that you, 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 you didn't get out when you were supposed to get out. Uh, I believe you. I trust you. But you need to prove your trust to me. And I've got this, you know, two hundred thousand US carat dangling in front of me, thinking, well, if I can, if I can show it to him, and he's obviously getting him on my side, I, I, that money might come back to me. So that's how this is. This is the the greedy mindset, you know, I was in back then. And and then, right, okay, but to prove your trust to me, uh, there's a game for Lancashire coming up this Friday against Durham. Uh, we know that you've played with Mel Loy for Auckland. He's your opening partner for Lancashire. I want you to approach him and get him involved. And you did? Yeah, of course I did. I was not going to say no to my hero. How much money did you make out of those matches in the UK? Uh, like per nothing. match? I mean, what were you making? Were you getting, you're saying that there's this carrot of a lot of money. Were you yeah. making significant amounts of money? Well, it's, it's, there's, there's different phases. You're, we're talking about the current situation of Lancashire. That game was to prove to, to my hero that I'm trustworthy. So I didn't get paid for that. So you're almost trying to win back his confidence in you. It seems incredible, Lou, that you would go to that level here that you felt bad, mm. even though you knew you were doing something that was abhorrent to the game of cricket. But when you get threatened and when you get accused of going behind your boss's back when you haven't and you've got all this money owns here, it's a pretty difficult position to be in when you feel like you've earned the trust back from that person. They believe you. So if you do what they say, then everything's going to be all right. He obviously was unbelievably convincing. Oh, you know this 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 guy is like you're saying he's, he was a, he was such an influential influential character in my life. He was, and you couldn't say no to him. Oh no, no, I, I did say no to him eventually, uh, and I've, I can't discuss that part of the story now for legal reasons. For legal reasons, um, but it, it introduced me to the, the dark world of of illegal betting in cricket. It's unbelievable for me listening to this, Lou. <laughs> What's it like thinking back to this? Now Now that you're clear of this yeah. and you're sitting in an Auckland studio on a horrible Auckland day <laughs> thinking back to how this all played out. Yeah, it's quite appropriate that it's grey and cloudy outside because that's that's the world and that's that's the memory I have of it. It's, it's horrendous. It's despicable. It's disgusting. It's a person that I just... I, I didn't get... Um, what's the word? Um, overly, like I didn't thrive on that world. I had to battle a lot of demons just to to to, to try and please people, and that is part of my nature. I like to please people. But what started off as greed in match fixing became uh, actually a bit of des desperation, given my financial position in the UK. Uh, given the fact that I still had a chip on my shoulder with the system of having to wait three years to play as a local in the UK and 
yeah, I've always found a ways to justify why I thought it's okay to do it. So you were bitter then in a little bit of a way. So did you sit back and think, well, it's match fixing, probably a lot of other players are doing it. What's the big deal? It's only, a, you know, manipulating one or two overs of a T20 game. What does it really matter? Is that how you felt? It's incredible. When you're involved with it, you're constantly told of like, it's happening everywhere in every single TV game. It's it's so many players are involved and this is happening and it's you're manipulated into believing that the whole of cricket is fixed. That's that's the mindset you that you, they 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 put you in to say it's okay. So and join them, be part of the crew, make some money, easy money. Yeah, and that's that that's how that's how it is. And you think, and you but it's such a hollow feeling as well because you try and be two people. You try and be the the criminal. You try and be the something you're not. And deep down, I know I'm not a criminal. I know I'm not a bad person. Uh, and what started off as greed and then became desperation, its it was just a complete F up. Did your teammates, Lou, know that you were doing this? So you're playing, as you say, in the UK, even going back to the Indian Cricket League. Did any of your teammates suspect this? Because I'm wondering, if I sat down now mm -hmm. and watched the highlights of one of these matches, mm -hmm. would I know that you've intentionally thrown your wicket away? I, I was I, Back at the ICL, I was in a bad place anyway. Uh, I was broken from cricket. Uh, I wasn't playing good cricket anyway. Um, and throw this on top, I was never going to do well anyway. So, yeah, you could look at any game and go, yeah, it lose nowhere. How long did it continue for? You fixing matches. I mean, what period of time here? Because we've got to skip mm. forward now to the Champions League with the Auckland Aces. Absolutely. Uh, 2008, I went back to, like, away from cricket. I was just doing bits and pieces of building work. Uh, se you know, separated, um, living close enough to the girls in the UK, uh, trying to find enough money to sort of sustain the lifestyle. And then I get that opportunity at Sussex, and we've spoken about that. And then I w during the, w the winter, I came back and played for Auckland, and uh, playing New Zealand is my love, and playing with the Auckland boys was it was great. I did well for Auckland. We qualified for the Champions League later that year in 2011. By that stage, the, the Indian bookie was, I'd, I'd known for three, four years. Um, obviously very interested in, in doing business, as they call it, during the tournament. Uh, I managed to not be involved. I managed to say, no, no, I don't want to be. I'm not for Auckland. No, no, no. Were you approached for any matches playing for Auckland in New Zealand? No. No matches no, in New Zealand. No, no. Why weren't they after you for games it's here? It's not the market for it in New Zealand. Right. There's, there's not enough. Yeah, it's not. It's got to be on TV live in India. That's where the. So for is. the Auckland Aces situation, was your hero still involved at that particular point in 2012? No. So what had happened to that relationship by then? To early 2011. Uh, yeah, we can't. No, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah I, I understand that, but I need to sort of get to a point here. And I need our, our I relationship, think, my yeah. relationship with my hero uh, dissipated 2008, and there was one occasion in, of communication in 2011, and then that was it. That was when the final no, I'm not. not and don't, you, don't walk, want anything you walked to away. What was yeah. his reaction that day when you said, enough's enough, I'm out. I don't want anything more to do, to do with you. <laughs> he was probably happy because he didn't have to pay me.